Today on the Global Sport Fisherman, our video series, we're going to be talking about spreader bars and how to rig them um, on different types of bars. There are several different types of bars out there and you just can't take a 13 inch squid and put it on any bar. Likewise, you can't take one of these little mini green machine type of lures and put that on any bar. You want to try to rig your bar so you have the proper amount of flex in it. Um, Let's take a look at some of the different spreader bars that are out there. This is a medium flex bar. It's 332 titanium. It's very light. It's designed for lighter baits, uh, for lighter tackle. Uh, the next size bar up is an eighth inch. This is eighth inch titanium. Uh, this is designed for heavier baits, you know, 12, 12, 13 inch squids, and um, your regular size green machines. <coughs> the next size bar up, the biggest one that we have, is a 3 16 titanium. This bar is for heavy, heavy baits, 18 inch squids, you know, and the like. Uh, and this is designed for 80 to 130 pound tackle. So let's get into some of these bars and let's see just how they should look when they're properly rigged. All right, we're gonna start out with a medium flex bar. This is 3 seconds titanium, it's medium flex, as you can see, it's rigged with 13 inch squids and has a tremendous amount of flex in here, just as it's hanging here. Um, as you can see, that if you were going through the water at five, six, seven knots or whatever, your bar is going to end up going like that. You're going to end up with basically a, a daisy chain, which is really not what you want. This is entirely too much flex for this particular bar, and it's all caused by the 13 inch squids. This bar cannot be rigged with 13 inch squids. Alright, now this is that same 42 inch medium flex bar and it's rigged with 11 inch squids. As you can see, you just don't have that dramatic flex that you had with the 13 inch squids. And when you're dragging this through the water at 6, 7, 8 knots, you're going to be down here like this, which is fine. Um, what you should do and think about when you're rigging your bars is you want about a three to six inch um, difference between parallel um, to assure that your bar is going to go through the water properly. Um, as you can see, this is well within that three to six inch off the parallel, uh, and it's going to work out just fine for you. This is a properly rigged bar. Now, all right, now this is the 42 inch, 8 inch heavy flex titanium bar and it is rigged with the 11 inch squids. As you can see, there's just not enough flex in this as it's hanging here. What's going to happen with this bar is you, when you're trolling it through the water at 5, 6, 7 knots, you're going to get a lot of walking or crabbing and whatnot. You want some flex in your bar, uh, but this just isn't quite enough. These baits, as they're rigged, are too light for this particular bar. You could put more baits on this to give you the right amount of flex, but it's going to be a lot harder to handle and so forth. I mean, but you can do that. Alright, now this is that same 42 inch, 8 inch heavy flex bar, and here we've rigged it with the 13 inch squids. As you can see, you're within the 3 to 6 inch off of parallel, but you've got considerably more flex than what you had before. So, this is a properly matched bar with properly matched baits. Now, we've talked about shell squids and the different types of shell squids as far as size and what bars to match them up on. Going back to the 42 inch medium flex bar, this is rigged now with a standard size green machine type lure. All right, as you can see, you've got entirely too heavy of a bait for this particular bar. Again, when you start trolling this through the water, you're going to end up like this, which is not what you want, and you're way past the three to six inch parallel mark. Now, switching out those heavy green machine type lures going with the minis, uh, you can see that this same bar, the 42 inch medium flex bar, has just the right amount of flex as it's hanging here. Um, this is a nice, perfectly rigged spreader bar. Alright, now with those same mini green machines, um, as you can see, this is a heavy flex bar, 8 inch, 42 inch titanium. As you can see, there's just almost no flex in it whatsoever. And again, you want to have it rigged with some um, flex keep you within that three to six inch off the parallel. Again, you could put more teaser baits on this 
uh, to give you that proper flex, but again, it's entirely too much to handle and whatnot once it's in the water. Alright, now this is the 42 inch, 8 inch heavy flex bar and it's rigged with the uh, large size green machine type lure. Uh, as you can see, you've got more flex than you had in the medium flex bar. This is a nice setup and it's perfectly matched. Now, you'll notice in all of these spreader bars that I've been showing you and how they're rigged, none of them have a center line. This has all been just for demonstration purposes. The center line is not going to have any effect at all on the flex of your bar. It's all about the teaser baits and matching them up properly to the right bar. Now, we've been talking about spreader bars and trying to match your teaser baits to the particular bar that you have. A couple of other uh, things that I want to just mention about a spreader bar and that is as you can see this particular spreader bar we've put a leader on here all right now the reason we put a leader on here for those of you that are fishing without wind on leaders in other words you're taking your snap swivel that's at the end of your 50 or 80 pound line or whatever and going right to this hub in a situation like that when you have a fish on and especially boat side and especially with a, a high flying marlin and whatnot when these marlin jump out of the water, the bar is going to come flying out of the water too. And what's going to happen is if you don't have a wind-on leader or a leader such as this, if that bar hits the main line like that, it's very possible you're going to lose a fish because of this swivel and the bar hitting that line. This, on this particular bar, is 250 pound test mono and it's only long enough so it goes by the end of the bar about two inches. Um, you, this is something that you should do on all of your spreader bars. The other thing that we do on our spreader bars, as you can see, we have a little vinyl cap. These swivel sleeves that are crimped onto these bars can be very, very sharp. This little vinyl cap does two things. Basically, it saves you from getting your eyes poked out and so forth, both sides. Uh, the other thing is it also helps prevent scratches from that expensive gel coat that's in the boat. All right, now I want to show you the difference between a conventional spreader bar, which this is, and a splash bar. The splash bar is something that Tournament Cable came up with quite a few years ago, and what we've done is we've incorporated a bird with the bar. Now, this is a splash bar here, and it's made with the Huntress Offshore Bird. And as you can see, the bar goes right through the bird. Now, when we came up with this, we tried several different variations of this. We tried putting the bird in front of a conventional bar, and we tried putting it right behind a conventional bar, and it really didn't work. The reason we go through the bird, and what we found is that with the bird and the bar being one, uh, when the bird moves, the bar is going to move. So what happens is that this bird, when it's splashing on top of the water, it's keeping the bar flat right on top of the water as well, just skipping right across. A splash bar is considerably easier to fish than a conventional bar. And the reason why is a conventional spreader bar, when you deploy these, you really want to try to keep the bar out of the water. You can have it just skimming across the top and so forth, but on, in most conditions, you really want the bar out of the water, which means you're basically limited as to how far back you can put these bar in, in your spread. Um, the further back you want it, the higher the position you're going to have to fish it from, whether it be a long rigger or a shotgun. Um, now, there are certain days that you can fish this bar, a conventional bar, way, way back. Um, and it'll work fine for you, but the vast majority of the time you'll get better results if you keep the bar just skimming across the top of the water. So, with that in mind, positioning it from, uh, fishing it from a high position, you're limited as to how far back you can fish it. The splash bar, on the other hand, where the bird and the bar are one, if you deploy these right side up, there is an upside down to these things, which is based upon the uh, angle of the wings on the center bird. You don't have to worry about any of the wings on the uh, ends of the splash bars. They're pretty much self righting But you can actually, if you position this bird right side up as you're deploying it, you could fish this thing off with a rod tip 
as far back in your spread as you want because the bird keeps the bar fluttering right on top under all conditions. Um, the splash bar in a lot of cases is far superior than a conventional spreader bar. Now, we've just gone through some basics about rigging spreader bars and matching spreader bars to the baits that you're going to be pulling and so forth. Um, we didn't actually get into the rigging of the baits, the floats, the beads, the stops, and so forth. Uh, that will be on another segment of the Global Sport Fisherman. But if you have questions about any of these products, any of these spreader bars, and so forth, Give us a call at 800-979-3474. You can visit our website at tournamentcable.com. Um, give us a call. As I said, we'll talk to you all day long about fishing. Thanks very much.